Polly, I brought you an extra blanket. It gets a little nippy this time of year in case you forgot. I haven't forgotten. I can't forget about anything at Aunt Polly's house. Well, Aunt Polly's house? Now, when are you going to start calling this home? I don't know. That's what I called her when I was in the hospital. But it's not how I thought it would be. Well, how did you think it would be? I thought Dr. Shannon would be here. And they'd be together, Aunt Polly and Dr. Shannon. And they'd try to get Jimmy Bean out of the orphanage. They'd all be waiting here when I got home. It would be like a family. And I'd be part of that family. But it's just me and Aunt Polly. It's not much like a family at all. Well, it's just me and Georgia where we live. I know, but not for long, though. <laughs> no, not for long. It must be like a miracle, having a life inside of you. No, child, not like. It is. I want to be somebody's little girl again. Poor little sparrow. Nobody needs you. Is that what you think? Well, you're wrong. Lucky little sparrow, it's a wonderful world when you've got a nest where you belong. You've got a family. Take a look around you. A family, can't you see? Sisters and brothers and fathers and mothers All the others are part of you and me You've got a family Everyone you're near to A family Yes, sir -y. Every butcher and baker And Baptist and Quaker And candlestick maker Slowing to an end Making circles and ripples And spirals and ribbons And echoes of love coming true You've got a family A great big family And the family begins This looks like some back-to-school activity. Oh, Reverend Gillis, how are you today? Miss Harrington, Polly. Good morning, Reverend. Well, don't tell me you are out buying uniforms, too. Uniforms? Oh, Reverend Gillis, whatever in this world are you talking about? Well, I was just down at Baker's Boys, where Mr. Baker tells me there was a large order from the orphanage. Uh, white shirts, ties, stuff like that. Jimmy Bean's gonna wear a tie? Could very well be, Polly. This Mr. Mayhew sounds like a man who likes to do things his own way. I admire that in a person. The Reverend King in Montgomery is always talking about the righteousness of man standing up and claiming what is rightfully his. Well, the Reverend King in Montgomery is not funding the orphanage. I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, do you intend to stop by the orphanage and check out the first day assembly? 
No, that would be too much like looking over his shoulder. That's not a good impression to foster. Well, it's something to think about. If you could have only heard Dr. King speak, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. Well, good day, ladies. I'll see you in church. Good day, Reverend. Now, I tell you, sometimes I worry about Reverend Gillis and the people he's so impressed by. This Dr. King from Montgomery. Sounds like somebody who'll just muddy up the waters. You could sneak. Excuse me? Into the opening day assembly at the orphanage. There's this old broken door down in the basement. Jimmy Bean showed it to me once. Polly, a grown woman does not sneak. And I guess a grown woman doesn't get into the opening day assembly. like men. I mean, I knew I had to wear a tie when I got married, and I could deal with that. I knew I had to wear a tie when I got married. I can deal with that, too, with this. This is getting out of hand. Assembly.